Welcome back to another beautiful day in the land of music. My name is Douglas, and today I wanted to show you how I use the Nord Stage 3, and specifically the piano with some pads under it, how I use this in church. When I play in church, I'm usually not the only keyboard player. So there's usually a keyboard player and a piano player, and I'm usually the piano player, but sometimes there still is a need to put some, some soft pads in the background or even to change the dynamics of the piano. And I use the organ electric piano, but the focus of this video is gonna be on the piano sounds and how you can tweak them, what you can add to them to make them more dynamic to change those dynamics as you play and doing this in a way that you can do this live in church. And I think that's the great thing about the Nord Stage 3 is the ability to change things on the fly. As you know, all the controls are pretty much out here on the control panel, which makes it really easy to change things. And in the very beginning of this video, you saw me change between a couple of live programs. You saw me change my morph parameters. So if you're brand new to the Nord Stage 3 and you're wondering how I set all of this up, I've got in-depth videos that I'll link in the description below on how to layer sounds, how to split sounds, how to use the morph functionality, which is really cool, especially in a live setting, to be able to morph parameters from your control to either a volume style foot pedal, like an expression pedal, or the modulation wheel. You can also put them on the aftertouch. So there's a lot of powerful ways that you can use the functionality in the keyboard to really lend itself to that live playability. So what I wanted to do is talk about what I just played at the beginning of this video. So I use live mode. That's my first tip for you is use live mode, learn live mode, and really embrace it because what you get when you use live mode is really cool. First of all, you get seamless transition. So I could be on my first program here, I could play. Then I could switch to my second program. You'll notice my first one's still playing. And then I could play my second one. Go back to my first one. So you've got that flexibility, the sounds just sustain throughout even when you switch sounds. A lot of keyboards will cut the sounds because the effect engine or whatever it is can only handle the one sound. So when you change from, let's say you go from an organ You want to go to your piano, I could hold the organ, and obviously that's a horrible transition, but you get the idea of the organ continues to hold with all its effects and everything while we switched and we did that stark difference. I wouldn't recommend doing that in church, but anyway, so that's my first tip. Use live mode, embrace it because it's a wonderful thing. And second tip is to learn layers. Use layers to your advantage. So you can either use layers to have a drone sound, which I have a video coming out soon on how to set up a drone sound so you can play piano and just have a pad sustaining on a chord in the background. But what I did in the very beginning of this video is I just had a pad and a piano layered together. And the piano I have on soft. So this is what I would do to either start the song or end the song. And you'll, you'll notice here, it's a very soft sound. I've got my frequency down on 14 Hertz right now. And I also have the frequency morphed to my mod wheel here. So what this allows me to do is to bring that pad in in the beginning and then start playing the piano on top of it. And that brings me to my third tip is use your panels. Don't be afraid to experiment and put different panels together. Right now I've got my pad and my piano panel layered together. But what I did at the beginning is I had my piano panel turned off. And so I brought in the pad, right? With my mod wheel. So I actually, rather than having to reach over and twist my frequency knob, I can just reach up here and turn my mod wheel to bring that pad in. Then I just turn the piano panel on. And then on my first program, so I switched over to that, this one has a regular piano on it. So you'll tell it's a little brighter. So if I'm introing the song, 
I would go in that progression. I would start, bring the pad in, start playing the soft piano, transition to the harder piano, maybe once the vocals start or once more of the instruments come in, right? So then what I do is the reverse of that if I'm ending the song. So maybe it's the, the final last ending pieces. Full bands in here. And then transitioning into maybe a prayer, I switch over to my program one. And I can start to bring the pad back. And then sometimes under prayer, I'll just pull the pad out completely bring my reverb up a little bit and just kind of have that uh, beautiful sound of the piano just there in the background. Sometimes I'll drop it down an octave, give myself that nice low C note there. That would be the ending of the song, right? So what I did there is I had two separate sounds, one layered with the pad assigned to my morph wheel and then a soft piano, and the second one, a regular piano, same pad sound, so you don't hear a difference in the pad sound when I switch. The only thing that's changing is the dynamics of the piano. So I'm gonna bring back my reverb here. What you could also do, depending on the sounds you use, if you're strictly focused on piano, you could use a third program where you've got the reverb turned up in your live mode. So I use, I have the B3 on one of these. And then I've got an electric piano here, or I did. <laughs> And then over here, I've got a bass sound. That's more for when we're jamming around in church before uh, worship practice or something like that. Sometimes we just... Sometimes you gotta jam, have fun. But back to the piano. What you could do is, because you've got five live mode programs, you could set it up so your intro, piano, and pad would be on program one. On two would be your regular piano and pad. And then on three, maybe you have your soft intro piano and pad with the reverb cranked so that you could bring your pad back. However you wanna mix and match those. So my first tip is to use live mode. Second tip is to use layers. Use the layers to bring additional sounds into what you're playing. Third tip would be to use the morph functionality in the keyboard to morph your pad filter or volume to the modulation wheel or even better if you have a foot pedal because then you don't have to reach up, you just bring your foot pedal in. And then a fourth tip which I would recommend is if you're playing piano to leverage the dynamics of that piano. So let me take the pad out of here by turning the pad panel off and just play the, the piano right here. You'll notice at the beginning with the intro and the ending, I switch to soft. And I do this a lot underneath either talking or praying, but you just tap it once and it'll change the dynamics of that piano so much. It's beautiful. You don't have to go and change a whole bunch of EQ, and obviously you could achieve a very similar or the same effect with the EQ, but this allows you with the touch of a button to just switch. So it's beautiful, and I love that underneath prayer or talking or areas of the song where you just need that soft, warm dynamic. And then finally, my fifth tip would be to play around with the effects section, whether it's delay, whether it's the EQ. So one thing that I'll do in regards to the EQ is I'll actually, I've got a EQ setting here where I've brought the treble up 3 dB. Now sometimes in a big mix, if you play with a big worship band, in a big mix the piano kind of gets lost, especially even the white grand on here. Oh, that's with my EQ on. It's, it's got a lot of mid, low end on it. 
And if I add just that three dB boost on the treble, sometimes there's just a song where you want that piano to pop a little bit more. Bring up the treble. You could bring back the bass a little bit. I'm not sure if I've brought the bass back. Yeah, I actually brought the bass back nine dB. So negative nine dB on the bass. Turn that back off. You'll notice there's a lot more bass and mid to it. Which is great if the piano is the solo instrument. But if it's not, you want to be careful about muddying up the mix. As a piano player, you need to listen to the band around you, listen to what's going on, and gauge how you need to change the dynamics, what you need to add for effects or EQ or whatever to fit better into what's going on with that song. So I'll change these depending on what song we're playing on a Sunday morning. And maybe there's an intro where you really want that piano to shine through. This would be a great place to throw that EQ on there. So using EQ can allow you to shape that sound even more to fit better into the mix. And then when it comes to reverb, I use reverb a lot and it can depend on your sound guy whether or not he wants you to have reverb on the keyboard. I have an understanding with my sound guy, I've known him for a long time and he understands that I'm just gonna control the reverb on the piano if there's an area of the song where I really wanted to get, you know, really soft. he allows me to just control the reverb on the keyboard. He doesn't put any reverb on it, just lets me control that from here, which yeah, that works. But if your sound guy wants to put effects on your keyboard and you're also putting effects on your keyboard, then you run the risk of starting to muddy up that mix. So be careful with the effects and talk to your sound guy. Come to an understanding on what he's okay with you doing, what he wants to control from the soundboard from front of house. So just talk to him, figure that out, figure out if he's okay with you putting effects on there or she. Could be a sound woman in our church, it's a sound guy. Um, but talk to your sound person and figure out what you wanna do specifically in your church. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you're looking for some ideas on how to expand what you're doing with the Nord Stage 3, or if you're brand new and you're just trying to wrap your head around what it can do, how you can use it and fit into your band with this keyboard because I will say there's a bit of a learning curve if you're brand new to this and you're looking at all the controls, it's like, what's going on? But as soon as you start to learn it, everything makes sense. And I go to other keyboards now and I'm like, man, this is not laid out very well because I keep thinking back to the Nord Stage 3 and how Nord has set this up so well for live playing. If you've got questions, throw them in the comments below. I'm always happy to talk through if you've got an, an issue or a problem you're trying to figure out or you've just got a question about the keyboard in general. I'm always happy to talk through that. Let's get some dialogue going on how we can best use this keyboard in a church setting. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss my upcoming video on how to build a drone pad and piano sound. I'm really excited to walk you through how I set that up, as well as I'll be coming out with a video on using this with a controller. So there's the whole external section on the Nord Stage 3, and I'll be playing with using an external controller with the Nord to take some of the controls that maybe I'm using on the A and the B panels and transition that to a controller so that I have just a little bit more playability there. Once again, thanks for watching, stay inspired, and keep making that music.